wax on, right hand, wax off, left hand, wax on, wax off, breathe through nose, out through mouth, wax on, wax off, don't forget to breathe, very important. Hmm, I thought I was supposed to be learning karate. Oh well. Wax on, wax off. Breathe in through nose, out through mouth. Wax on, wax off. Hello, my fellow noobsters, it's me, Texas PK, and today we're back here at our village. Uh, if you remember on our last episode, we finished this nice little bee house where we could get plenty of honey and honeycomb, but that's not our main objective. We wanted to make a fully automatic and more industrial strength uh, bee farm, and I decided I wanted to put that underneath in an underground base so that we don't have to look at it, but still get all the benefits. Let me go ahead and show you what I built. I have a temporary entrance right here. I'll probably put in something a little better, maybe inside the library. Um, and I built this really cool uh, honeycomb combination honeycomb and honey bottle farm. Uh, I built a tutorial on it, and you can take a look at that if you'd like. I'll probably put a card up in the corner right now if you'd like to take a look at it, uh, or maybe at the end of the episode. Um, at any rate, you can see I use the azalea leaves, and I'll talk about how I got those in just a minute. Uh, I put eight that are dedicated to the honey bottles, and then I built the simpler honeycomb farm and have eight for that as well. And it has been really, really productive. Let me give you a little quick look at it. I know you're seeing some of the background of the room, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But I wanted to show you how much we've produced. Uh, so far, already a full double chest of honeycomb, as well as three and a half stacks of honey blocks. And if you take a look in our chest, we have another... Oh, is that about 12 plus nearly 13 stacks of honeycomb and a whole bunch of honey bottles as well. Basically, every single honey block is made up from four honey bottles. And I have a little, I'll just go ahead and show you, I have a little track running underneath to pick all those up. Nothing complicated on unloading. The rates aren't super high, so it's good enough to just go ahead and, as you can see, drop off all the loot as it picks up the drops from this farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at this room because... When I built it, I was just going to do it as a simple room, no, no decorations. But then as I started looking at it, uh, it just felt too plain. So, so I wanted to give it more of a natural feel. And you can see I kind of built these little artificial trees, uh, customized in each corner. Uh, put some doorways to go into different areas where we can build some other things. Uh, and I also thought, might as well put some of that honey to use. Uh, you can only build so many flying machines and other devices with honey blocks, so I thought it might be a good building block. What I did is I got a bunch of shroom lights, put them behind the honey blocks, and I haven't made up my mind yet if I want to use the diorite, or if you look over here, if I want to use the andesite. Uh, this is a little bit darker. That's a little bit lighter. I know some people hate diorite, but in this situation, it might be the better choice. I haven't really made up my mind. Um, the only thing is that this decoration, as beautiful as I like it, um, it required a lot of moss and different azalea, flowering azalea leaves. And the only way to get that is if you have moss to start with. Um, now, I haven't found a lush cave, so where did I get my moss from? Well, I hate to admit it, but wandering traders do have their uses sometimes, and I had the emeralds, the wandering trader had the moss block, so I grabbed it. And I manually, I started off manually uh, bone mealing the moss and transferring that over to some stone I collected. But after a while, it got, it just got annoying. It got tired of trying to come back in and manually make more moss as I needed it. So I decided I was going to make an automatic farm. And let me show you what that looks like. I think it's pretty cool. It's a design I came up with. I'll probably make a tutorial on this, but let's go ahead and take a look and I'll show you what I built. Now, the way an automatic moss farm works is it takes a stone generator that's being run by an automatic clock, and then I use different redstone circuitry to automatically dispense bone meal from this dispenser into this moss block, and then I have a delayed circuit to do a little water washout. Um, it's really great because all I have to do is flick that switch and it then automatically runs for you. Now, I had to prime it with five pieces of bone meal, but it gave me some 
oh, I think it's about a stack and a half of moss blocks, and then also some moss carpets and some azalea trees. I put the moss into a composter, and it gave me about 10 pieces of bone meal, which I then put back into the system, and it gave me two and a half stacks of moss, which I'm going to use right now to finish off the decorating. Uh, but you know what? Let me go ahead and just demonstrate how this works. It's pretty, pretty cool. And what I'll probably do is uh, in the next day or so, um, if depending on how long it takes me to edit, I already worked on a farm build for this, and I'll show you step by step in that. So keep your eyes out. Like I said, it should be coming out in the next day or so. Let me go ahead and give you a real quick demonstration of how of it and work. As you can see, it just pulses back and forth and pushes out new stone. And once it's ready to go, our dispenser shoots out some bone meal, creates new pieces of moss. Our dispenser flushes out some water to push it all over here. And then our rail car picks it up and adds it to what we already have. It's a pretty good design and it's uh, fully automatic. But for now, let's go ahead and finish the decorating in this room and then I'll show you what we have planned for today. All right, that's the room finished. I think it looks all really good. Uh, like I said, I haven't really made up my mind if I prefer the diorite or the andesite. So if you have a preference or if you have an opinion on that, uh, let me know down in the comments down below which one you think looks better. Um, and I'll take that into consideration as well as I try and make my final decision on this. But all in all, I really like the way it turned out. Uh, but now it's time to go ahead and show you what we're working on today. All right, if we come over here to our main road coming through our city, uh, you can see that I used uh, basically a stone brick for the road uh, with some cracked stone and mossy stone variants. I also put in a curb using the different oxidized uh, stairs and uh, have one going up to sort of an entryway up to each of the main builds. Uh, the only thing is, is that I think this fully oxidized copper is, I don't know, I just don't like the color. I think it's too, uh, I don't know, just too green. Um, but I kind of liked it. And let me show you. I'm going to start over here. I kind of liked it like that, where it's just one short of being fully oxidized. And I, th I think that looks a little better as a uh, as a curb on the road. It's sort of like it got a little bit of corroded through the weather. Um, but at the same time, it still has kept some of its uh, sheen to it. Uh, I guess it's a, I guess it's a good thing I have a honeycomb farm, so I can oxidize it at this state and keep it there. Of course, I have so much of it that if I don't like it and I want to try a different color, it won't be much to just go back and remove the wax and put it to an earlier state as well. But I think I kind of like this color, um, so I'm going to go ahead and wax some of that real quick, and then we're going to head over and work on the real project for today. Back in a second. All right, I think that's enough waxing of copper for now. I had a few mishaps and accidentally uh, over scraped some of my copper. Uh, so we're just gonna have to come back, wait for those to oxidize, and then I can apply the wax that they'll stay where they need to be. But I think for now that's pretty good. But So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're really working on today. Uh, the main road coming out of the city uh, is leading out this way, and I want it to eventually lead over to our village breeder over there in the distance. But if we're going to do that, we need to have a bridge. Uh, hi there, Mr. Drown. You can mind your own business. Um, right <laughs> for now, I've been using this kind of janky grass bridge uh, with a rail going across it so we can bring our villagers over. Um, that's not going to be good enough. So what I want to do is build a nice stone bridge. Um, using some of the copper, using some of the stone bricks, but having, because it's a main entrance for our city on this side, I also want to put like a little, uh, I guess you'd say guard house or gatehouse here at the 
uh, entrance to the city. Uh, one over here and then one on the other side as well, kind of matching each other. Uh, also can be kind of a way of keeping an eye out on the river as it's coming through this portion of our city. Maybe I'll put a couple houses or something on that side. Uh, I haven't really made up my mind. Right now I'm just focusing on the bridge and putting that in. Of course that means these trees are going to have to eventually move all the way out of the way, but for now I'm just going to remove uh, most of them, like probably one or two back in. Uh, that's a little bit of a grind, so I'll go ahead and do that but um, I won't make you watch all of it. Maybe I'll show a little bit of it in a time lapse or something, but uh, watching me cut trees down is probably not the most interesting thing in the world. So let me go ahead and chop some of those down and we'll get back together in just a minute once that's all done. See you in a sec. Boy, there sure is a lot of I'll be back in a minute in this episode. All right, all the trees are cleared. We have our space ready. So this can be where the main walkway goes through. I removed some of the sugar cane and I had some spare potatoes I had growing over there from back at the beginning when I had a manual potato farm. I just never got rid of them. They just stayed there, but now they're, I'm starting to get rid of them. I'll probably finish that off. Uh, I probably will leave some of the sugar cane to act like river uh, cattails or weeds or something like that um, but I'll probably not use them anymore for my farming uh, I'll probably build an automatic farm sometime in the near future I already have as much sugar as I possibly can need and well the only reason I need paper at this point is when I get ready to start building rockets but I don't have an elytra yet I guess that's a future episode to go on an adventure to the end as well but for now let's go ahead and build our bridge and, and gatehouse and I think the best way to do that is through a time lapse. All right, let's get building. that finishes our bridge and gatehouse entering into our city from the village breeder and our neighboring village uh, I think it turned out really good I put a few finishing details and I'd like to show them real quick before we call it an end of an episode so let's take a quick tour as you can see I went ahead and did the copper for the roof line both at the top and halfway point uh, I also went in and did some dark oak fences and gates uh, and put in some lanterns. 
I'm not sure if I want the copper to oxidize. You can kind of look at it and it looks a little funny against the gray um, when it starts turning that first stage. I think I'm going to let it go until it gets to the second stage. If, it, if that doesn't look good, um, I think I'll just scrape it back to the uh, original form and then I can wax it. Uh, I can afford to take a look and see how it turns out, so I don't mind waiting for that. And when we go inside, we notice that there's some spruce floors. I have a standard old workbench and chest, uh, a ladder going up to the second floor, where we have a nice lookout window going in each of the cardinal directions. Uh, notice I put in some iron bars in order to keep this place feeling more secure and then going out into a balcony where we can look out at who's coming across the bridge and act as kind of a guard. Um, I also, if you notice right here, these are just spruce trap doors hiding some of the uh, copper blocks from the roof line. I just didn't think it looked good, but this kind of gives it a little bit of structure and feeling of mass to it. it just kind of looks nice. I also came in with our bridge using half slabs to get up to this point and using a nice copper guardrail. Again, I'm not sure what color I want this to go. I'm just going to let it oxidize and see what I like for that. I put in some light posts. Not entirely sold on this, but I think it looks okay for the moment. Um, again, I think if it oxidizes, it might look better in the green form. So I think I'm going to let that go and see how it looks. And then coming over here, it's the exact same thing, just a mirror image. And this way we can have a nice, secure outpost as people are coming into our city. Um, I might go in and add some armor stands and some different things to kind of decorate it as well. Uh, also might do an iron golem and have him here just kind of as a security feature for our city. Um, if I did, I might have to put him on a lead just so he doesn't get too far away from the guardhouse. Don't want him wandering off to the neighboring village or, or getting lost along the way somewhere. He needs to be right here. Well, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I had a lot of fun building this. And I hope you enjoyed yourself too. If you did, make sure you do all those things you're supposed to do. But I think that's going to be it for now. So I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas BK. Be good to each other. Bye!